most of my life is spent very close to this power plant. Rick Wilson lives, works, and surfs near the now-closed San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station. Although he's not bragging about it, he's worried about it. Wilson lives in Oceanside, works for the environmental organization Surfrider Foundation, located just a few miles from the plant, and he's been surfing these waters around San Onofre over 40 years. The San Onofre plant was built a half century ago to produce energy. Many nuclear plants are built near oceans, rivers, and lakes because the water provides a natural cooling process for the heat collected from the nuclear waste. During its heyday, San Onofre had over 2,000 employees and provided about 20% of the power to various parts of Southern California. These days, Wilson is nervous about all the nuclear waste stored here, particularly since the plant was permanently decommissioned in 2013. It's a horrible place to have ever put a nuclear power plant, if there is a good place, but certainly right on an eroding coastline with sea level rise, with um, you know the threat of tsunamis, with an earthquake fault just offshore. San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station sits at the northernmost part of San Diego County at San Onofre State Beach, which is just south of the city of San Clemente in Orange County. The majority owner and operator of the nuclear facility is Southern California Edison. If you've ever driven out here on Interstate 5, and of course many of you have, you know from your car you cannot miss this humongous plant which basically sits in the Pacific Ocean. Those massive twin spherical containment buildings are just about 40 yards from the water and they are the iconic nuclear reactors known as Unit 2 and Unit 3. They were designed to contain all of the nuclear radiation from the spent fuel. We've got the nuclear waste being stored here for decades and every year that goes by that becomes more perilous. Wilson explains some people are angry and frustrated with Southern California Edison. Concerned parties want the energy company to find a better way to store the nuclear waste or transport it somewhere else, which they acknowledge is also very dangerous. The California Coastal Commission is allowing Edison to bury about 1,600 tons of spent fuel in steel canisters in something like an underground tomb located near the nuclear reactors. A lot of people were under the impression that when the plant shut down, you know, within a few years, things would be gone. And now there's not even a date. You know, there's not even a, a timetable for when this this radioactive material will no longer be here. So just how did we get here in the first place? San Onofre has a storied history dating back to August 1964 when plant construction began. In 1968, San Onofre started generating power from what was then Plant Reactor Unit 1, which was in operation until it was decommissioned in November 1992. These reactor units were built while Unit 1 was in operation. This is Unit 2, which went online in August of 1983. And this is Unit 3, which became operational in April of 1984. Fast forward to 2008. That's when San Onofre received multiple citations over issues such as failed emergency generators, improperly wired batteries, falsified fire safety data. To be fair, Southern California Edison did make improvements to the reactor units, both in 2009 and 2010, improvements that were supposed to be designed to last 20 years. Nevertheless, in January of 2012, both Unit 2 and Unit 3 had to be shut down. And that's because it was determined that both of these reactors out here had early and untimely wear. Now, the public was not initially told about this information. In fact, details were very sketchy from Southern California Edison. Well, that's when various media outlets started investigating this place. Folks like Voice of OC, the Orange County Register, LA Times. Reporters began digging away at the various safety mishaps and the lack of transparency. Ultimately, news stories showed that the public had been misled, and SoCal Edison did not disclose the severity of the safety issues. In May of 2013, California Senator Barbara Boxer concluded that the modifications to the facility did in fact prove to be unsafe and did pose a danger to the millions of people living within 50 miles of the plant. 
And I want to be very clear about something. If this story seemed a bit one-sided to you, there's a reason. San Onofre refuses to be interviewed by me or us, it seems, regarding this contentious issue. I've actually tried for years, even before all the controversy, to speak with officials there eventually to be told no. Well, this time, here is what SoCal Edison had to say to me in an email. And for the record, this was after we had already had our security clearance and we're just about to do the interview. <laughs> At the 11th hour, the email said, quote, Dave, I regret to inform you that we must cancel your visit to San Onofre tomorrow. I apologize for the late notice and for twice canceling plans for interviews with our Chief Nuclear Officer Tom Palmasano. The takeaway is, sadly, this is why SoCal Edison and San Onofre sometimes lose in the court of public opinion because, Rick and Elizabeth, it does seem they keep running from the camera and dodging tough questions.